I, as per usual, when I film these videos, it's either early in the morning or really late at night. So I pretty much just woke up, went out and voted, came back home, went, I need to make a video. So I think this is gonna be my new filming setup. I really like, like looking back while I'm editing my videos and seeing how my fish are doing and I just really like my fish. All right, let's be honest with ourselves. I'm just a big fish person. So, and on that note of fish, hopefully tomorrow I'm going to try and deconstruct my 10 gallon and then reconstruct it and do some stuff um, with my fish tanks. That's the goal, at least. Um, I'll probably be filming most of it. Okay, so back onto the topic of today's topic, which is acne and how to prevent it. Um, how to figure out exactly what's causing it and I actually have a textbook that I'm gonna have open just in case I need to reference anything um, So Okay, so I have my textbook open I actually grabbed it as you can see it's all nice and highlighted and I'm gonna be looking down every so often just to make sure I'm getting all the information correct so Acne is classified as a disorder of the sudoriferous glands. I want to make sure, no, of the sebaceous glands. I want to just, again, I want to read it right off of here so that way I can 100% make sure I'm getting all of my information correct. Um, acne is a chronic, the definition of acne is a chronic inflammatory skin disorder of the sebaceous glands characterized by comedones and blemishes. There are many types of acne. Common acne is known as acne simplex or acne vulgaris. Inflammation of the sebaceous glands resulted, results from retained oil secretion cells in the excessive propion, propioni bacterium acne, so P. acne bacteria. So P. acne, the P. bacteria that, you, that causes acne you get from your mother. It's strictly maternal, so if your mother had acne, you're more prone to having acne. Unfortunately, this is kind of how the wind blows. What a uh, sebaceous gland is, is your oil glands. It's just the scientific term for oil. Now, the causes of acne can be genetic, which makes it incredibly hard to get rid of. So you're going to want to look at your, um, your family history and ask, sit down with your parents and say, hey, did you have acne if you're really suffering from acne? If it's genetic, it's very, very, again, very difficult to get rid of, and at that point in time, I would recommend seeing a dermatologist if everything else that I'm going to recommend doesn't work. So, it can be genetics, it can just be a clogged follicle, it can be bacteria, or it could be triggers, which is hormones, stress, cosmetics, skincare products, and foods. I know when I get acne, um, I believe at this current time, I think I'm allergic or I'm having some kind of an issue with the shampoo I'm using, so I'm gonna swap it out, and see if that helps. When I say I have acne, I don't really mean I have severe acne. I get the occasional pimple here and there. When it's on your forehead, that's typically associated with stress. The cheeks, I believe, is liver problems. And if you get it on the chin, it's typically hormonal, which means if you're female, if you're a woman, you might want to go see your gynecologist about that. Um, when it's on the forehead, it's mostly stress or it's from not washing your hair enough, which is a really common thing that I've seen. So I'm gonna go down from the basics to more things that you can do. So what I always recommend to my acne clients is to change their pillowcases more often, sanitize their phone, especially if they're on the cheeks. Like I said, the cheek I believe is associated with liver, but I've never had a client who's had acne who ended up having some kind of an issue with their liver. It's just based on Chinese facial mapping, that's, that's the areas associated. Um, I'm gonna grab some water one sec. So, with my acne clients, I always say, change your pillowcases more often. I know I don't change my pillowcase as often as I should, so whenever I start to see acne on one side of my face, specifically the side that I sleep on, that is when I go, okay, it's probably associated with my pillowcase being dirty. So that is one of the things I absolutely recommend to every single person who comes in and tells me that they have acne or they have issues with their skin. The other thing, again, is if you talk on the phone a lot or if you hold your, you know, your phone up to your ear, it could just be, the, especially if it's in that region, it could just be your phone has some bacteria on it and you need to wipe it down a little bit more. Sometimes acne can have these really simple fixes. Um, I know one of my friends, she gets really bad breakouts on her forehead. I asked her how often she was washing her hair. She said once a week. Said, bump that so about three times a week and 
let's see where that goes. Her acne cleared up for the most part. She still gets the occasional breakout, but for the most part it cleared up. It could just be oil from your scalp dripping down onto your forehead, which I've seen and is really, really, really it's, like I cannot stress how common that is. And for people to come to me and be like, oh, I'm having issues. Another thing you can do if, if it's on your forehead, I typically try to like braid my hair back every night. I know that these that I don't braid my hair back, it tends to be a little bit more oily. Now that one isn't an exact science, that's just things that I found for myself and so it might not work for everybody. Obviously everything I'm saying may not work for you. If you really have some kind of a skin concern, I recommend getting a facial first before you go to a dermatologist and see if that esthetician can um, do something to help your skin before again before going to see a dermatologist because a lot of times i've noticed dermatologists will just give out medications without really analyzing the situation um dermatologists don't know a lot about skin health which is really unfortunate so whereas estheticians which is what i am we we know a lot about skin health and what's going on with the skin so Sorry, yawning. So, that's the first thing I recommend. So, now I'm gonna go down the list of things that cause acne, which is this nice little highlighted section. So, genetics are hereditary, which I already went over. Clogged follicles, um, that's actually a pretty simple fix. So, if you're prone to acne, what I absolutely recommend to every single client who comes in with acne, exfoliate about three times a week. Now, with your exfoliants, you're gonna wanna be, I'm gonna say picky with them. You're gonna wanna try to get something that's more of an enzyme exfoliant or something that has salicylic acid in it. Um, I don't like, I don't like scrubs. I do not like scrubs. I can go on a rant for days about how much I dislike scrubs. That's another video for a different day. That's a video in itself and I probably will try to make that later today and have that posted next week. So scrubs are just, they're just not great. For a lot of people um so i would recommend getting something with salicylic acid like if you can get a cleanser that has salicylic acid i know murad has a really great one it is the clarifying cleanser it has encapsulated salicylic acid what salicylic acid does is it cleanses the inside of the pore so you would use that cleanser about three times a week you could probably use it more if you have really bad acne but i wouldn't recommend using it more than three times a week now acne does have a cycle it is your pore gets clogged you know you you break out you have a pimple you immediately want to dry off that pimple using something like clear assault or something like that now clear assault is another topic entirely but that i will get into so you're going to want to try and exfoliate so you're going to dry it out then you're going to have that dead skin just sitting on top of your your skin that that's those dead skin cells they're blocking your pore which is going to cause acne so you're, you need to exfoliate in order to break that cycle of acne. So salicylic acid is 100% what I recommend. Now I know Clearasol has benzoyl peroxide. I was looking to see if I had my Clearasol here. Benzoyl peroxide is really great for drying things out. It doesn't really exfoliate the pore. And you may notice after a period of time using Clearasol, your skin kind of gets used to it. Your skin cannot get used to salicylic acid because of the way that it's produced. Your body can learn to metabolize benzoyl peroxide though. At least that's how I've been informed of it. So I'm not 100% sure on if your body metabolizes it or if your body just gets accustomed to it and stops working. So with clogged follicles, if that is the cause, you're absolutely going to want to exfoliate. And again, I always recommend exfoliate about three times a week. Um, another thing that's really great is by Clarity RX. It's called Fix It. It's a toner. You would use it, again, only three times a week. Anything with exfoliating, three times a week. Any products that I list will be down below and I will link them down below, all right? So that is just for starters. Um, I actually need to make sure I write everything down because I know I'm gonna be listing a lot of stuff in this video and this video is going to be long. So I apologize for the length of this video. So those are some of those now if it's bacteria related again that might be something you want to speak with a dermatologist about there are ways to potentially get around it i know a lot of things with sulfur um can help which i have some masks here that have sulfur and i'm going to go down the list of things that i have personally or i personally tried or have seen a difference with at the end 
and again everything I'm gonna link down below I'm going to link it straight to that whoever's website it is and just let you know although clarity I don't know if they sell to the public you might have to go into a hand in stone for that um, so if it's bacteria related, I mean, obviously there are ways to battle that. You could get an LED mask that has blue light in it. So, um, again, I'll link one down below that I've heard good things about. I haven't tried any of them on myself personally. I use my own at work, um, that are again, professional grade. I don't know if it's open for the public to get. So the blue light of an LED kind of looks like a black light. Honestly, I really, it looks like, hold up. Let me see if I can get this to... You see how that's a little blue light? That's really what it, it'll look like on your skin. And it's warm. It feels really warm. And I, I love doing blue LEDs. So, um, that can help with the bacteria. Again, I'm going to go down a list of products that'll help too. So then there's other triggers. Like I said, hormone. Or if you're having any kind of a hormonal breakout, it's typically on the chin. You might want to speak to your gynecologist about it. If you're a man, I'm sorry. I, as far as I know, there's nothing that I, that anyone can do about hormonal acne. Now, um, it could be stress related. Again, that's going to be showing up more on your forehead if it is stress related. And then it could be cosmetics or skincare products, which is a really big thing. I notice a lot of times people who use Dove soap, like Dove bar soap on their face, I know that the commercial say it's supposed to be gentle, but it's actually way too harsh to be using on your face. Um, you're going to be stripping all that oil from your skin, and then you're going to be pumping out more. Anything that's too harsh for your skin is going to cause more acne, which is horrible, I know. But what happens is you strip all that oil from your skin, and you go and once you strip all that oil from your skin, your body goes, oh my goodness, I have no oil, I need to pump out more because it goes into distress thinking like there's other issues going on with their skin with your skin that oil is actually really good you have a lipid bilayer which is what protects your skin from pollutants toxins things like that so you don't want to strip it too much it's i've seen um a lot of times people who have who wash their face too much like i i have clients who have who wash their face three or four times a day and their skin is really bad and they don't know what's going on the reason your skin is quote unquote bad is because you're stripping so much of that skin so much of the skin that your skin really doesn't know what to do with itself at all all right um in terms of cosmetics like makeup i makeup really doesn't cause you to break out it's if you're not washing your face or if you're not using the right things. So if you have a primer, you're gonna to wanna to get a primer that has dimethicone in it. Dimethicone is going to be that barrier, especially if you have oily skin. It's that barrier between your skin and, uh, that's gonna be the barrier between the skin and the makeup. Dimethicone is a silicone. If you don't like silicones or you don't like things that are silicone based, I'm sorry, but that's what you need to use in order for it to not penetrate into your skin. When your makeup penetrates into your skin, it's because your skin is dehydrated and you either need to drink more water or again with cosmetics, you need to change the cosmetics that you are using. So the dimethicone prevents anything. When your skin's dehydrated, it's going to want to absorb, absorb anything on the surface. Hence why you might be absorbing makeup and why your makeup might be gone by the middle of the day. You're probably absorbing it, which isn't good. So you're going to want to try again, drink more water. And honestly, I would get like a hydrating toner throughout the day. Um, Murad has a toner literally called hydrating toner, but I wouldn't recommend that if you have oily skin. You could get the multi-active toner by Dermalogica, which I'm writing down now. Another thing that can be causing your acne is foods. Dairy is such a huge culprit. I have, again, I have clients who I said, hey, what are you, do you, how often do you have any kind of a dairy? And they're like, well, I have a bowl of, oh, I have a bowl of cereal. I have three bowls of cereal. This is actually one of my friends does this. He has three bowls of cereal in the morning. He has grilled cheese, something typically with cheese, like a kind of sandwich for lunch. And then for dinner, he normally has some kind of a meaty product. Um, you know, obviously sometimes there's cheese in it, sometimes there's not. It's, you know, whatever they're feeling for that day. But every single morning, they have three bowls of milk, three bowls of cereal. 
which is such a huge culprit. Huge culprit. I also have clients who say like, oh yeah, I really only like milk and I only drink milk and this, that, and whatever. That's a big problem. <laughs> Try to cut back on any kind of a dairy intake. Like, if you love ice cream and you have a bowl a day, try to make it a bowl every other day. Or if you love milk or you love yogurt or whatever it is that you love that's dairy and you're noticing bad acne, try to cut back on dairy. Now, I'm not a nutritionist, so I can't actually say, hey, stop having dairy. I would recommend going to a nutritionist and seeing what they would say about replacing that. I don't know enough about nutrition. And again, I'm not a dietitian, I'm not a nutritionist, so I can't flat out tell you to cut that out but I have seen that reducing the intake of dairy has helped people so tremendously. Dairy is such a big culprit. All right, so I'm just gonna read through this and make sure I got, it. okay. So I did miss quite a bit with food. So excessive iodides and salts. So having that iodine, I believe is the, um, so having things that are really salty, like chips, pretzels, things like that is going to affect your, your acne. Um, kelp and cheese again dairy and any kind of a packaged food especially 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 fast food such as you know burger king anything like dairy queen whatever it is and then it says and minerals obtained from the ocean source found in vitamins can all irritate acne so i believe that's going along with the excess salt products um those are just again some things and then it's going down the list of grades of acne if you have cystic acne Go see a dermatologist. Cystic acne is when it never really forms a head and it's just really deep and in there. So now I'm gonna go through some of the things that I have found that have really, really helped my clients or um, that I've seen help my friends with acne. And for starters, Christine Valmy has a really great line. They have, um, I believe it's actually called their acne line. So they have, it's called a deep cleanser, which is a cleanser. They have a toner, um, which is Valine, which is a little bit drying for my skin type, but it's really great for anyone with acne. Then they have masks, they have so many masks, and that'll help, and then they have, um, what's it called? Um, moisturizers moisturizing is really important with acne because a lot of what you're doing is drying your skin out you need to put and stripping that lipid bilayer when that lipid bilayer is in distress that's what causes sensitivity redness and things such as rosacea oh excuse me so you're gonna want to really really um with any kind of an acne, you're gonna to wanna to moisturize. Obviously, moisturizing sounds terrifying because you already have that oil built up, but there are moisturizers you can use. For example, Valine from Christine Valmy. Another really good one is from Dermalogica. This is their oil-free mattifier. It has SPF. SPF is important for everybody. So this is the oil-free mattifier. This is broad spectrum, which means it covers UVA and UVB. UVA is aging rays, UVB is burning rays. So you're gonna to wanna to get something like this this is a sample I actually don't really use this my boyfriend swears by this though and he's he's very Italian so he's very thick Italian oily skin so this actually not necessarily has helped him because he doesn't use it a lot but he does like the product in general um, it's again oil free and it's it's mattifying so I'm just gonna do a little bit on my hand that's actually quite a lot but it does Mat mattify your skin I swear so you can actually kind of see that difference from here to here I swear it's matte um it's not super matte it's like a semi matte but there is some mattifying and it smells good it smells like sunscreen but it's just, but like fruitier so definitely recommend this 100% Another big thing is if your acne is hormonal, these are prop. this is actually definitely way too thick if you have acne, but this is a really great example. Retinol is really good for acne because what it does is it increases cell turnover. Ooh, why is my chair turning? It increases your cell turnover, so it causes exfoliation. So Murad has the Retinol Youth Renewal Serum, which as 
I think 0.5% retinol, um, which is a, actually a, a decent dosage. I won't swear to how much retinol this product does have. Why am I type of text? So, but I do believe it's like 0.5 or something like that, which is a really good beginning. And this is a serum, so it's not going to be thick. Um, I will do a, a routine showing you how to apply serums, how to apply everything, which I will try to have posted soon, but I will go through like a, a proper nightly routine for everybody. I believe I already, I already have one up, but I'm not hundred percent sure I go through how to use things and why I'm putting things in a certain order. So then there's this retinol youth renewal night cream, which I really like. I have sensitive skin and I find this helps calm down my skin. Retinol is actually a calming thing. Um, but I do really like this for myself and I have dry skin and it's moisturizing. So this is not really great for oily skin, but it's an example of something to have. And I have lots of samples of products because I work, you know, with different companies all the time. So I have so many samples. I have nothing to deal with that. Like I don't even have anything to do with most of them. So this is a, a mask that I actually will be doing. I'm, I'm gonna be doing a review on the channel. This is Clear Starts Blackhead Clearing Fizz Mask. This is great for getting rid of blackheads, especially if you have a lot. They're gonna get. It's gonna target the bigger ones. Uh, it's not really gr meant for like really really small blackheads. Like I have really small pores. It's really hard to get my blackheads out. So this does not work as well on me, but on someone like my boyfriend who has larger pores, this will work amazing on. I actually am going to be using this on him tomorrow. So this has sulfur. Like I said before, anything with sulfur is really good. Obviously, unless you're allergic. Um, Mira has a clarifying mask, which is really good. And I absolutely love. They also, I don't know if they discontinued, but they have an oil control mask, which you can use as um, a cleanser also. Which I really like. Um... Murad has some really great stuff. Their acne line is actually pretty great. I'm just going to link their entire acne line down below if I can find, like, the kit that they have. Um, I know... I know Massage Envy sells their acne kits, which is awesome. They're actually, their acne kit's really great, and I 100% recommend it because it comes with, like, a cleanse, cleanser, toner, a mask, a moisturizer. It comes with everything you really need when you have acne. So blackhead fizz, blackhead clearing fizz mask is gonna be really great, especially since it has that sulfur. It's gonna help keep the acne at bay. That sulfur targets the bacteria in your face and tells it to not necessarily tells it to stop, but it kind of draws it out. Um, as does anything with clay or um, what's the other or charcoal. Those are really great ingredients clay charcoal and sulfur are especially really great when you have acne so now i'm going back on to my christine valmy products because i swear by this line i actually went to school at christine valmy and i have seen their products help so many people who have acne um so she this is special cream 11 which i beat the crap out of i don't remember what's in here i believe it has sulfur um so good so um, it's because it is moisturizing, but it's very, very thin and a little bit goes a really, really long way with this product. It's so incredibly thin. I love it. And then we have Jelly Mask. Now, Jelly Mask I use on my boyfriend. I give him facials every two weeks because his skin needs that. Um, so what this actually says is, um, a specialized biogenic mask for acne problem skin. Reduces redness and irritation, leaves skin soft, moist, and cool. Apply a thin layer over clean face and neck. Relax for 15 minutes. Remove with cool water to be used two or three times a week. This, I believe, is a professional-only product. I won't swear to it. This is really good, but you need to have so much oil production in order for it to work. So, otherwise, it will burn. It's very, very strong. This one is much less strong, and I would recommend this to, to anyone who has really any acne. It does tend to be a little bit tingly because this does have sulfur, I believe. No, this one doesn't have sulfur. This one has lactic acid. Uh, lactic acid, kaolin, 
um, zinc, which is healing, kaolin, which helps target some of the oil in your skin. Um, lactic acid is really great because it's just a mild exfoliant. Buy a thick layer over penetrating cream um, for redness. Mix one teaspoon Balinsta powder with allantoin and aloe vera to make paste. Trouble skin, add one teaspoon. Again, this is more for, this is the professional size. They do sell, so this is really big. This is massive. This is a professional size. You're not going to be getting, it's gonna be in much nicer packaging if you do just decide you wanna purchase this going to be in much nicer packaging and it will be it will have different directions but yeah and then I'm going to show you some exfoliants that I recommend for dry skin I just need to go grab them because they're in my bathroom right there are obviously more and this video would go on for years if I went off and said told you everything um, anything that is an enzyme that has uh, pineapple or bromelain is typically really, really good for acne because that helps eat away at the oil on your skin, the excess oil on your skin. But what I really like, and these are both open to the public, I swear, Vegetal Peeling Mask by Christine Valmy. Now this is a really, really weird product. I typically use it only on my lips, um, I, but I use it on my boyfriend all over his face. So it comes out and it's really, really thick, super thick makes your skin look absolutely gorgeous after it's on and what it does is it turns into a chalky paste um, it, it makes your skin feel really tight and then you're gonna want to wash it off it takes about 10 minutes for that entire process and you're gonna want to do a thin layer technically what you're supposed to do is a technique called gommage where you flick it off but nobody has the time for that so that is one recommendation again I typically use it on my lips because it's such a great exfoliant um, but you tend to use a lot if you're using it on your entire face. Another one that's really, really great that I absolutely love and adore and like recommend to every single person ever. It's a bit strong because it does have charcoal in it, but it is the Daily Superfoliant by Dermalogica. This is a sample size, obviously, but it's a sample size that is really full. I have used this about five times and I still have probably another five or ten times to go because it's right about here so I have quite a few more uses what it actually says is it's resurfacing anti-pollution powder exfoliant it is a powder exfoliant so it's very very strange so what you do is you dispense a little bit of powder into a cup typically is what I do you put some water on a brush like I use a really crappy foundation brush you can mix it up put it all over your skin. I think I have a video of me using this. I won't swear to it though, and I probably will try and film a video with it. This is actually really great, and I would only recommend using it about twice a week. Again, if you have really, really, really bad acne, cystic acne, maybe three times a week, but it is very, very, very strong. So, I'm sorry, I know I totally overloaded all of you guys with as much information that I could give you about acne, but I am hoping that somebody will be able to use that information and determine where their act, how their acne is coming and how they can fix it because I, again, I'm, so yeah, there you go. You see how that just, it rolls right off? No. Oh. And it just, it, my skin, I can already tell the difference. It feels softer here. Looks a little bit better, actually, if you can kind of see the difference from one side of my hand to the other. There's, like, more color in this side. Um, sorry, but, yeah, I really hope I can help uh, this video help somebody. If you have any more questions, seriously, feel free to pop, pop a comment down below. Reach out to me on Instagram, which, as always, will be in the description. And let me know what your opinions are on um, your acne. Let me know if there's any questions you have let me know anything i'm here to help so seriously feel free to reach out um other than that don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i make videos every tuesday and i make animal videos every weekend or m most weekends i try to um i have a lot going on on this channel so and check out my playlists check out everything i guess um have a good day guys and I'll see you probably this weekend.